Okay, so in this next topic, we're going to be looking at um, two different things. We're going to be looking at expressing numbers in standard form, and we're also going to be looking at something called metric prefixes. Now, when we talk about expressing numbers in standard form, there's one specific reason behind why we do that, and that's so that we can write very large and very small numbers much more easily. We can represent them uh, in a much simpler way. Uh, instead of adding lots of zeros onto the end of large numbers, such as a million, a billion, a trillion, we can use standard form. And instead of adding lots of zeros before the decimal point for very small numbers, such as 0 0.00008, we can express them in standard form again to make them appear much more simpler and easier to manage. Um, when we use standard form in engineering, one of the things that we need to be able to do is to add, subtract, multiply and divide numbers in standard form. So let's take a specific example, first of all, of a number in standard form. Uh, if we take 3.7 times 10 to the 4. So what does that actually mean? Well, 3.7 times 10 to the 4 means a number 3.7, but with the decimal place shifted four spaces to the right-hand side. If we were to shift the decimal place four spaces... 1, 2, 3, 4, we would go from a number of 37 when we shifted it one decimal place to a number of 370 when we shifted it two decimal places to 3,700 when we shifted it three decimal places and 37,000 when we shifted it four decimal places. Therefore, 3.7 times 10 to 4 means exactly the same thing as 37,000. All that's happened is the decimal place has moved four in that direction. We can take another example. This time we'll go for a small number. This time we'll go for 5.4 times 10 to the minus three. Now all this means is we've taken the number 5.4 and the decimal place has been shifted three backwards. One, two, Three. So when we shift the decimal place 1 backwards, we get 0 0.54. When we shift the decimal place 2 backwards, we get 0 0.054. And when we shift it 3 decimal places backwards, we get 0 0.0054. The number 5.4 times 10 to the minus 3 is the same as the number 0 0.0054. The only difference is that the decimal place has moved back one, two, three places. Since we're discussing standard form, let's look at what it means to actually express a number in standard form. Whenever we use standard form, the first part of the number is always a decimal, and that decimal is always between 1 and 9.9. .9. Okay, So it's always a decimal that's less than 10, but more than 1. You do see other formats of numbers, but when we truly express something in standard form, that first number or that first part of the number is always a number between 1 and 9.9. .9. There's various different examples. It could be 6.8, it could be 9.7, it could be 1.2. The second part of the number is made up by multiples of 10. So we might have times 10 to the 3, or we might have times 10 to the 4, or we might have times 10 to the minus 2. What that basically tells us is how many times we need to multiply our number by 10 in order to get the true or the original number. Remember we said previously that 6.8 times 10 to the 3 is the same as taking 6.8 and moving the decimal 3 along. 6, 8, 0, 0. So that times 10 to the 3 is telling us that we're multiplying the number by 1,000 or 10 cubed. Now 9.7 times 10 to the 4 tells us that we're taking the number 9.7 but it's actually being multiplied by 10 to the 4 this time or 10,000 which would give us 97,000. And 10 to the minus 2 what means that we're dividing by 10 squared or we're taking the decimal place back 2. The key thing to remember is that when we're expressing a number in standard form, this number here is always between 1 and 9.9. .9.
So since we're on the topic of standard form, let's just have a quick look how we would enter a number in standard form into our calculators. There's basically two different types of numbers. There's numbers that are um, large, bigger than 10, bigger than 100, bigger than 1000, and then there's numbers that are small, numbers that are less than 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.0005, and so on. And so we have to be really careful how we input these. Most calculators will have a times 10 to the power of button. So if we wanted to enter the number 4.2 times 10 to the 3, we would do 4.2, and then we would hit the times 10 to the power of button, and then we would push the 3 button. 4.2 times 10 to the power of 3. So think of that button as times 10 to the power of. If we were going to enter a number that was very small, let's say we were going to enter the number 3.8 times 10 to the minus 7, we're still going to use the times 10 to the power of button, but we're going to do 3.8 times 10 to the power of. Here's where you need to be really careful, the power of minus 7. We're going to use this button here for minus, and this button here for 7. I just want to point out now, and hopefully that you'll remember this, we do not use this button when entering standard form numbers. That's subtract, not minus. When we're entering minus numbers, we're using the minus. When we're doing subtraction in other sums, we use the subtract. So when we use standard form, when we do standard form, it's always this button here that we press when we're into entering 10 to the power of a minus number. So now that we know how to input standard form into our calculators, we can begin to do some sums involving standard form. So let's start off with a multiplication. We're going to do 3.8 times 10 to the minus 2 times 1.8 times 10 to the 6. Using the method I've just shown you, we're going to input that into our calculators. So, so 3.8 times 10 to the power of button minus 2, and that's minus not subtract, times 1.8 times 10 to the 6. And that gives you a number of 68,400. But if we want to express that number in standard form, then what we need to do, first of all, is move our decimal. We're going to have 6.84, and the times 10 to the power of this time is 1, 2, 3, 4 times 10 to the power 4. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken the raw number, 68,400, and we've converted it into standard form, moving the decimal place 1, 2, 3, 4 backwards, hence the times 10 to the 4. Let's do another one of these. We'll do 6.7 times 10 to the 3 times 2.7 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay, so if we input that into our calculators, 6.7 times 10 to the power of 3 times 2.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8 equals, it might return a number in standard form, 1.809 times 10 to the minus 4, or it might yield a number not in standard form, which would be 0.0000. 1809. If it returns the second option there and we want to convert it into standard form, then we can see that our decimal place has gone back one, two, three, four places, hence the 1.809 times 10 to the minus 4. We always have a minus for small numbers and no minus when we're looking at large numbers. I'm just going to do one more example of these, and this time we're going to do an addition. So we're going to do 3.65 times 10 to the minus 5, and we're going to add on 2.62 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, what we can see is this number here is a lot smaller than this number here. So when we do the sum, 3.65 times 10 to the minus 5 plus 2.62 times 10 to the minus 3, we get a number of 2.6565 
times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, the number is a lot closer to this second value because this first value here is very, very small in comparison to the second. Now you know how to work with standard form on your calculators, you should be able to attempt some of the questions below.